Welcome to our very first debut episode of Might Help, Can't Hurt, Conversations with Leaders, Doers, and Friends. And the, the idea behind this series was I've been having a lot of really cool conversations with really cool people in my world. And I, I kept thinking, boy, I bet, I bet there would be a lot of people who would love to be a fly on the wall during these conversations who would really enjoy kind of getting to listen in. And so I was due to speak to my friend Jamie Smart uh, this afternoon, and I said, hey, do you want to have our private conversation publicly? Do you want to kind of touch base and, and, uh, and, and get to get, you know, catch up on things uh, live? And so, and so uh, Jamie is about to, uh, to join us. And I'll give you a little bit of intro. If you don't know him, you can find out more about him. Hey, Jamie. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, nice to see you. That's my tech person leaving now that you've shown up. There, Thanks, Jamie. Clara. Yeah, and um, so I was just explaining to people that this is sort of like our uh, our private conversation made public. So, well, uh, and this is my first ever kind of two part Instagram live. So this is a propitious occasion. Well, it's mine as well. So we're uh, we're we're absolutely even. Uh, and uh, and I was just kind of uh, going to tell people if they want to learn more about you, they can go to jamiesmart.com. Mm -hmm. They can read your New York Times, not New York Times, Sunday Times. Sunday yeah. you're in London, best-selling books, clarity and results. And what, what I, what I really was hoping for from this, not just this, but like do, doing this is just, I've had some cool conversations and I imagine you have too, since this all kind of kicked off. Mm -hmm. And I just thought instead of continuing to have these private conversations and then coming back and sharing, let's just talk. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been, when did we last see each other? Was it it was, I, I seem to remember breakfast at that penthouse place in Santa Monica. Was that, that the was, last time? That would, no, it would have been Prague. Oh, uh, okay. Prague last spring, summer, I think, was the last time we saw each other in person. Right. And and bizarrely, neither of us were there for a bachelor party, which is... No. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. I know. It's, it's strange. But so, so I first met Jamie. Uh, I, I wrote him uh, an email. I, I got his email newsletter and I read one and I really thought, Oh, this is really good. And I wrote to him and said, Hey, I really enjoyed uh, your newsletter. And he wrote back and said, cool, because yours inspired me. And I think that was how we met. Yeah. And I was, re I remember at the time you were undertaking what to me looked like a Herculean task of writing. If memory serves, it was a newsletter every day for yes. a year. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I still, I still, and, I really like those. I used to read them every day and I it really, I don't know. I just, I feel like that kind of sparked my idea of how I could write and that sort of thing. So I really, yeah, I'm grateful to have had that input. Well, that's very cool. So now how, how, how are you keeping, how's the, how's the, how's the, the, the mini family and the, the larger family? I, everyone's okay and, and safe and well, thank goodness. And, uh, uh good, you know, like, it's so interesting, you know, Michael, I think, you know, I've had, like you, I bet I've had a lot of conversations with people over the last few weeks, and you never know how, you never know in advance how you're going to respond to something like the, mm. you know, the strange times we're going through and that sort of thing. And uh, I know there are people out there who are really suffering and struggling and undergoing terrible hardship. I've, I found it to be, uh, I, I, I guess a lot of my life is fairly uh, uh, socially distanced anyway. So. <laughs> this is, that's what I heard. I, I heard somebody say, this is the introvert's time to shine. Yeah, yeah. So how about you? How's everyone? Um, the same. We're all well. Oliver's uh, quarantined with his girlfriend up in Oregon. And uh, the rest of us, the girls, and uh, Nina and I are down here. And uh, we, it, it is one of those horrible things, because on the one hand, I talk to people most days who are really going through it one way or another. And, and it, we're kind of enjoying a lot of it, because it, 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 there's a sweetness to be able to get this much time together, which normally we're all so busy doing our separate things. So I, I, we also have our moments of boredom and wanting to tear each other's hair out. But mostly, we're, we're, there's a, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of sweet. What, now, what are you, like, how are you finding business changing? Because, because that's the well, really interesting so thing it, right now. Well, a couple of things. The first, this, and this looks to me like 
a combination of luck and maybe a little bit of uh, good judgment over the longer term. But as you know, about seven years ago, we started offering live streaming on all our programs. And over the last seven years, we've seen the number of people who joined us from around the world via live stream go up, 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 up. The number of people showing up in the room in person go down, down, yeah. down, down, down. So at the beginning of this year, we decided that virtually all our programs were going to be run mainly live streaming. So even our, our coach training and our clarity certification, we only had in room for the first and last modules and everything else is via live stream. So in terms of the actual delivery of programs mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, there's, we haven't had to cancel an event or change anything or anything like that. The thing that's going to be interesting, though, is just seeing how the world changes in terms of what people are looking for. It's kind of, it's kind of funny, Michael. I, I suddenly, rem you know, a lot of people are uh, opining that we're, you know, headed into a recession and that sort of thing. And I suddenly remembered that when I did my first ever webinar, I vividly remember it because I guess webinar technology had been around for years and years, but I was nervous about doing one. I'd never done yeah. one. And so it was one of those things. And this was the beginning of 2010. And I, my very first webinar was a webinar about the principles and it was called recession proof living. Hmm. And I'd totally forgotten about that, but, my kind of stance at the time, uh, if anyone asked me uh, how I was dealing with the recession, I'd say, oh, I, I've decided not to participate in it. And that was, that was kind of, it was kind of a stance at the time, but I'd forgotten that it was a stance and it just kind of became part yeah. of my thing. So I'm looking at all the stuff that's going on. And I'm like, well, this is going to be really, really interesting. And the, the, th the thing that really strikes me is that it's very, very likely that all kinds of things about our world are going to change in really quite significant ways in the years ahead. Well, that was always kind of being... I, I, I was going to say, you, 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 one of the things I've always loved about you is you are a futurist, whether you own it or not. Like, <laughs> I don't know, but, but like you've always had a vision for where the world might be going and what's possible. And I'm I'm curious if if that's if 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 given what's going on at the moment that's changing or it's just affirming what what you saw coming. Well, a bit of both. I mean, I for starters, I never predicted we'd be going through what we're going through at the moment. But then I've I've never been really a great predictor of kind of here's what it's going to look like or that sort of thing. It's more kind of like currents and streams and that sort of mm. thing, and. It's, it's kind of interesting, Michael, that the, uh, our mutual friend, Kim Hare, started talking to me about uh, climate and climate change yeah. and that sort of thing probably about 10 months ago. And I've been you know, looking into that, doing lots of reading and listening and, uh, and that sort of thing. And it occurred, it, it's, here's something that's so interesting to me. A lot of the things people were saying kind of needed to happen because of climate change and that sort of thing. The coronavirus has kind of landed and all of a sudden what I see is our kind of systemic response to that. A systemic organic response to everything that's going on and people doing kind of spontaneously in governments and mm. companies doing things spontaneously that years of planning and preparation and you really ought to should, should do this couldn't get us to do so i kind of i instinctively trust the way that us human beings respond you know the old saying necessity is the mother of invention i foresee a bunch of invention going forward i really well, and we've do. been seeing it i mean it's actually there is so you know watching i mean here in the u.s the i suppose every government probably feels it's bureaucratic and top heavy but but it has been extraordinary how they have been able to get certain measures through that are genuinely for the good of, of, of health and people. And it's just kind of, it's just kind of, hey, we have to. Mm. And, and I think there's something, you, 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 you know, it's, it, okay, I'm going to go sideways because this is with, one of the things that's occurring to me is, I, I don't know if you've lost anyone 
um, you know, we've we've lost one family member, but ironically not to this. They just died a couple of days ago, and mm-hmm. uh, and you know, I don't want to lose touch with that part of it, but by the same token, this is such an extraordinary time of contrasts. So, you know, there are the people I've talked to who are on the front lines and just, they don't have time to think. So they are just all in and they're doing their best. And and actually mostly the ones that I have had the chance to spend time with doing well with it, tired, but well. There are people who are just getting hit right and left with, you know, layoffs and, and, and personal things. And then there, there, there are a group of people who just kind of are finding life interesting again, you know, it kind of makes it obvious how boring life have gotten that, that there's sort of a fascination with what's going on. And then there, there's this interesting fourth group and I'm totally making up the categories, right? Yeah. But, but who are so excited about this because of what you're talking about, because suddenly we're in a time where rapid change is easier, where, where things can fundamentally pivot much more quickly than they could. Mm. And, and I'm finding it interesting, and, and I'll be curious like if you've had this, but I, they're, they're almost split down the line into, into two categories in my world. And there's the ones who I would describe as doing a fantastic job of slingshotting, like, uh, do you remember, uh, was it, what was the movie about Mars with Matt Damon? The Martian. The Martian. Where they, they slung shot the spaceship around Earth to get an extra, you know, boost. Yeah. And that, the, you know, we're using this to slingshot. And, and then there are people who are just kind of creeping me out because they're totally abusing the opportunity right. um, and, and going after it. And it's, I, I don't know if you've found that in your, you, you, you know, because I know you also spend a lot of time with CEOs and leaders and people who kind of, are making decisions at a larger level. If you found anything like those distinctions, I, I I haven't really been looking at it like that. But I I guess my funnily enough my the thing that's been occurring to me, and maybe this is the futurist in me. I think back to uh, when, like you know you know I love making an analogy with germs for the stuff that you and I are interested <laughs> in. Uh, well, I was <laughs> I was reading a book called The Butcher's Art, uh, which is very, very good about um, Joseph Lister and about surgeons in the, uh, in the 1800s. And something, something that the author said, which I'd never, that had never quite struck me, was that, that at the time of Lister's work, Lister was, you know, the person who pioneered aesthetic surgery, there were tons of people pouring into London and that uh, that was creating huge numbers, huge amounts of illness and that sort of thing. And it prompted a humanitarian, he described it as a humanitarian crisis. And that's what prompted the necessity for all that stuff to get developed and what led to the germ revolution. And I, I've i seen with the everything that's been going on with everything from social media to digital media and all the things that are happening, it occurs to me that the changes sweeping the world at the moment that are kind of exacerbated and accelerated by uh, what's going on with uh, the virus and so on, they may be prompting a similar kind of uh, uh, inflection point or tipping point or something where all of a sudden, you know, it's going to be all hands on deck for things like mental health and that sort of thing. We may well see uh, just... In, perhaps in ways that none of us expect, see this stuff kind of breaking through and having wider appeal and all that sort of stuff. Because there's certainly been a lot of stuff in the news about, you know, impacts on mental health and of what's going on. And we're going to see, you know, whatever happens in terms of layoffs and that sort of thing. So I, that's kind of where my attention has been, actually, looking at, OK, well, how does that play out? As well as the as well as the, the basic stuff of... Um, what does this mean for society more broadly? You know, what does it mean for us? It's it's such a, you know, I, I think you and I have commented in the power, I've said to you that the world more than ever is kind of like living in a Marvel comic and with mustachioed villains and all sorts of stuff. And this just kind of adds to that. It's like, holy cow, this is, uh, things are getting weird. 
Yeah, and I, one, of, one of my favorite cartoons I've seen, and it was actually came out pretty early on in the crisis, is of these aliens gathering around a television set going, man, have you seen this series of Earth? It is getting crazy over here. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and so, now, if I'm remembering right, you had a sort of, was it Clarity 2030, your, your vision for... Yeah. So, so, so... I'm going to do my botched version of sharing what, what Jamie's up to, and then he'll actually tell you what he's really doing. But what the, the reason I was thinking of it is you were talking about a vision for what if the, the principles that Jamie and I both teach him through his clarity work, me through the inside out work are become the norm that becomes the basis for mental health, the basis mm -hmm. for how we relate to our psychologies collectively and individually. And in a very, unplanned obviously I, and and weird way something like this really makes it it seems to me exponentially more likely that that vision becomes real and i i'm just wondering if that's something that you have thought about consciously uh, yeah and and so my the the way that it occurred to me funnily enough it, when it first hit me that that's what was coming i was in la you i attended a mastermind group that you were at and amy chen mills was at and i was that's at, right and I that. was at it's yeah. a small group, and it, it was the next day that that hit me, and what I saw was just like we were born to adults who already knew about the fact of germs. There would one day be a generation of kids born to parents who already know that uh, we have this innate capacity for insight and resilience and transformation and well-being within us, that it's there within everyone. And but the funny thing is, Michael, what didn't like, so I had that, you know, I arbitrarily set a date of 2030. That was the thing they met, but I completely overlooked something. And maybe this is a very futurist thing to overlook, but I overlooked the fact that those kids are being born and growing up right now. Yeah. That, that that's already happening. And yes, 2030 or whenever might be, a, a, where we could draw a line in the sand and say, okay, that's a generation, but actually it's already happening. And it really occurs to me that, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of planning and execution, all that sort of stuff. But when I look back over my life, the fact that like we're sitting here having this conversation today and my life is the way it is and that sort of thing. If I look back, it, it probably, is down to seven or eight big insights or unexpected turn of, turns of events. Mm -hmm. Like despite all my plans and schemes and that sort of thing, it's actually these six or seven things that have happened that have me being here today. And I think it's probably kind of the same with humanity, that we can make our plans, and good thing too, there's lots of great stuff that comes from that. But actually it's things like this, these uh, unexpected events that often uh, turn the tide in a certain direction. So I think it's entirely possible that we might see uh, necessity bringing forth something, just something simpler and more practical in terms of mental health and well-being. Now, now where, where are your girls with that? Because with my kids, so Oliver and Clara are 25 and 22, Maisie's 18. There is a line between Oliver and Clara and Maisie in terms of growing up where everything was online and growing up during the transition to online. And Oliver and Clara feel it. Like they will mm. talk with Maisie about, man, you've just grown up with this stuff. And there's only a seven year gap. Mm. So I'm just, I, I, I find that fascinating that it can be that big a difference in that small a time. Yeah, well, it, it's, it, I, I guess if you think like, Facebook and, and smartphones were what, like 2006? 2006, 2007. 2007. So, uh, I mean, Tallulah's 16, Tilly's 20. They're both pretty much digital natives as far as I can tell. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the things that are just instinctive and intuitive to them, I'm still kind of like a dinosaur with, and I'm relatively tech -savvy. Well, but here's, here's here, I mean, this, this is the funny thing, so... So, so it, it, I'll break the fourth wall a bit, but like Jamie and I were were <laughs> were kind of texting before then. Should we do like a dry run? And I'm like, nah. And we were like, oh no, this is gonna be a disaster. And it was so Clara, who was in here, you know, she was here to just make sure we didn't do anything stupid. 
<laughs> yeah, but she left before we started talking. Well, that's so. true. That's true. I think she figured, okay, they managed to hit live, which I think is the bit she was worried about. Right. So, so you go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, what? I know, again, I, I feel the need to apologize, but then I just apologize a lot, like for even looking in this direction when there are people who are struggling. But like, what's exciting for you right now? Like, what are you excited about? Well, the thing that, funnily enough, the thing that's most exciting to me is that, you know, a lot of people, understandably, have been talking about, wow, this is a time of great uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. But I look at it, and I'm like, no, it, it's not a time of great uncertainty. It's got exactly the same amount of uncertainty as there always is. What isn't there right now is the illusion of certainty that we had two or three months ago. Yeah. Two or three months ago, there was this whole, you know, if you'd have asked me in December, Jamie, tell me what's uh, 2020, 2020 going to be like. I was like, well, Michael, it's going to be pretty much the same as last year, but a little bit different in these ways that I can describe for you and that I'm excited about, that sort of thing. And yeah. that was all BS. Like it wasn't, it, it, it looked real. It looked <laughs> Whoops. It looked it seemed, it seemed it was, like a good idea at the time. Yeah. And, and so... It, it seems to me that right now we're just way closer to reality than we were six to eight weeks ago, you know, uh, and that, and to me, that's exciting. I'm, I'm my, from a personality perspective, I have this tension between liking things to be steady and predictable and that sort of thing. I'm loving a feeling of adventure and excitement and rolling the dice and not knowing what's going to happen. But given the choice, I'll probably make things like given the choice, I'll make things uh, familiar and safe and boring for myself. But actually, I, I love a bit of chaos. I love a bit of randomness. And the thing and the thing that looks most. The thing that looks most present for me at the moment is, you know, prediction. There's not a huge amount of. We're not very, as human beings, we're just not that great at predicting stuff. And some are better than others and that sort of thing. But what we are good at is responding to stuff and doing, you know, d dealing with what shows up and that sort of thing. And so that's what's exciting to me is is to, to, to navigate this time and see what we can create in this time and, and see, just see what shows up and, and kind of rather than, rather than, do whatever we can to try and create that illusion of certainty again, just to kind of surf the unknown and and uh, lean into the uns lean into the reality of the moment. So that's what's looking exciting to me. It's the kind of the rawness of it, if you like. Feels like an adventure, and I well, I, I get it. I get you know there are people in horrendous situations at the moment. So I'm not like oh it's all fine for me. I, I but by the same token I you know I could be. Uh, I could be sick tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, yeah, it's an adventure, man. Yeah, I've, I, the metaphor that I've been coming back to a lot in the last few weeks is the magic carpet ride. Like every morning, all I know to do is get on the magic carpet and see where it takes me. Yeah. And and so far, it's taken me to some pretty cool, interesting places. And and I know how to do that. Like I know how to, your words, surf the unknown, my words, get on the magic carpet. Yeah. Beyond that, I don't know. And it's so interesting because I, I often define the work that we do with people. You know, I, I call myself a catalyst. I think you call yourself a, a, a clarity coach. But but essentially, it's about loving disruption. Yeah. It, it, it really is about loving people enough that they feel safe enough to be disrupted so that something new and creative can emerge. And 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 I kind of feel like this is... The, the planet offering up some some loving disruption and like any loving disruption it doesn't always feel loving in the moment but it is it's kind of you know so i you you know my backstory that I, I i suicidal depression and 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 i've talked to a lot of people who had were diagnosed with with terrible illnesses who have recovered and and we have a conversation when i'm with people like that about whether or not we look back on our illnesses as a gift and I have always said no. And I know I, didn't, I don't look at it as a gift because I would not give it to my children if I had any say in the matter. Mm -hmm. But I also always describe it as 
the best thing that ever happened to me that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And to me, that's the opportunity. That's what I'm kind of excited about is, look, nobody wants this. But given that it's here, what a freaking opportunity. Mm. Yeah, I like it. I like it. It 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 strikes me that I mean I don't I don't know if it's the I don't know if it's the planet operating it up or if it's just the uh, the the nature of the world we've created that uh, has X sure. amount of fragility sure. in it. But whatever whatever the whatever the reasons for it, I don't know. My sense is it really is an offer, like you say, an opportunity to to just to just live a little closer to reality and see see where the journey takes us listen my friend it's great to see you if people want to find you i know they can go to jamiesmart.com what's your i don't know if it comes up for people what your uh, instagram is jamiesmart.com on inter on instagram and on twitter and facebook and all the usual places yeah well jamie 